what's up my bro tundrum here back with another video and today i'm going to be showing you my cedh geyser and giraffe deck now this deck is competitive but it's not that competitive like it's probably on the lower end of cdh but definitely a lot stronger than regular decks so just a quick disclaimer so if you're looking for a super super op cdh deck this deck is not what you're looking for but this deck honestly I love it. The reason why I haven't made it any more powerful is then it just gets, I don't know, not as fun to play. But I just love this deck. This deck is by far my favourite to play of any of my decks. And it's just great. So how's it, how it works is it's got Geeta and Dralf as the commander. And it pretty much tunes for its entire deck, milling itself, drawing cards, resurrecting zombies with the commander and spells, bringing them back, sacking them to get more value, utilising this with discard and sack outlets, things like that benefit us from death triggers, and just search for our deck until we get to multiple of our mini combo pieces, and then win. Now, the thing with this com... Um, you can also win by swarming them with zombies, but it's not the primary win con. Now, um, the, the reason why this combo is so good is because all the cards in the combo are really good in the deck on their own. Like Grave Crawler here, it's really solid. It can we sack it, bring it back, sack it, bring it back, generate us tons of value. Um, Carrion Feeder, it's a great sack outlet as well as being a combo piece. Um, these are a few cards that aren't so good without the combo. I'll get to the combo in a minute. Uh, but they still generate value for sacking them. Older of Dementia, great card. Diagraph Colossus, as well as a combo piece. It's incredible. It's just an all-round really, really solid combo. So without further ado, let's get into the list. So I split it into five sections. We've got the combo. The card drawer and tutors. Um, this is actually in the wrong section. Uh, card drawer and tutors, utility and ramp, so that's things like ramp, graveyard, extra graveyard resurrection, just utility stuff, interaction and protection, so that's like removal, things that protect our creatures, and the mana base, which isn't so important, you can really do whatever you want with the mana base. So first up, I'll get into the combo section. I Actually, let's look at the commander, Geister and Giraffe. It's a 4-drop 4-4 four, four, legendary creature human wizard. And when it enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. This is really nice. Immediately milling us for four cards is really good. Because in this deck, having a card in our graveyard is probably just as good as having it in our hand, if not better. Um, there are some situations where we'd rather have cards in our hand, like enchantments and artifacts. They're quite hard to get back from the graveyard. But in general... Having a card in our graveyard, if anything, is like a hand, if not better. Then it says during each of your turns, you may cast a zombie creature card from your graveyard. So this converts our entire graveyard of zombies into our hand. It lets us, if we don't have anything extra we want to play, play a creature, sack it, then play it back, to get, and then sack it to get it even more value. It's just super solid. Um, in my opinion, you can potentially use the Scarab God as a better zombie commander, but in my opinion, especially for this deck, Geyser and Drelf is definitely the go. So let's get into section one, combo pieces. So I'm going to just go over all the combos at once, show you all the cards. So I'm going to show you combo one. Um, I'll explain the cards as I go. So we have uh, all these cards kind of link into each other as well for a combo. But combo one, this is what originally, I just made the commander out of the way, I don't have much screen space. But this is what originally inspired me to make this deck into a combo rather than a zombie swarm like I was originally planning. So you need a Havangle Lich. You then need either one of these four cards here. And you then need a Sack Outlet. Well, not any Sack Outlet. You ideally want Ashnod's Altar. And then uh, something that can win you the game from there. So you may think this is confusing, and sorry if it is. But um, I'll get around to it in a sec. So, you've got Have Angle Lich. It's a 5 mana 4-4, four, four, and for 1 mana, it essentially says you can cast anything from your graveyard, and then it also gains all the abilities of that card until end of turn. So, this essentially says, as long as this is on the field, you can cast stuff from your graveyard, but it costs 1 more to cast. Oh, and you can also do this combo with Liliana Untouched by Death as well. So, Have Angle Lich or Liliana Untouched by Death. Now, um, how it works is... So, have Angle Lich lets us cast stuff from our graveyard, costing one more. Liliana just lets us cast it by minus freeing her. Now, so, you've got have Angle Lich. You then need one of these. These are zero cost, 
or one cost things. Rooftop Storm does suffice because it makes something cost zero. Um, one cost or zero cost things. You then need Ashnod's Altar. So pretty much how it works is you've got your creatures in your graveyard. You pay the one, bring it back, sack it, bring, and then you, yeah, sack it, sack it to the altar, bring it back, sack it to the altar, bring it back, da -da 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 -da. and you can do this infinitely. With Mem Knight, uh, it also works with Liliana. Mem, this is with Lich. Mem Knight gives us infinite mana, infinite ETBs, and infinite death triggers. Sparring Construct, infinite ETB, infinite mana with Liliana only, not with the Lich. And infinite 1-1 um, counters and enter the battlefield and death triggers. Universal automaton, just infinite uh, enter the battlefield and leave triggers. And infinite mana with Liliana. And rooftop swarm, infinite mana with anything. And infinite ETBs and LTBs. You can also use cards like Plague Belcher, Diagraph Captain, Aether Flux Reservoir, Diagraph Colossus, on and on. And that can also win you the game on the spot if you don't have anything to spend the infinite mana on by summoning infinite one ones, gaining your infinite life, or making your opponents take infinite damage. So that's this that that's one of our combos. Um, the combo section here, sorry, it's a bit clunky because they're so they all suffice into each other. Then we have another combo: rooftop swarm plus storm. Sorry, plus either where is it? Grave crawler. Oh, here it is. Um, either grave crawler. Or Liliana and any sack outlet, so not just the Ashnod's altar. Um, I don't actually have too many infinite sack outlets in this deck, but I do have a good chunk, good enough. Um, so pretty much how this combo works is your rooftop swarm, zero. Your zombies cost zero. You then have a grave crawler in your graveyard. You then can because you can cast grave crawler from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. You then cast grave crawler. Sack it to your sack outlet, bring it back. Boom, 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 boom. Infinite LTBs and leave the battlefields. And then all their sack outlets do something, or well, these three at least. Um, Altar of Dementia mills out all your opponents. Auto mill yourself, looking for cards. Carrion Feeder gets infinitely big. Ashnod's Altar, infinite mana. This also works with minus freeing Liliana untouched by death. Letting us cast any zombie, doing this with any zombie. Rooftop Swarm, ideally, if you're going to go tutor for something that and not put it into your graveyard, because it's quite hard for us to resurrect enchantments and artifacts, you normally want to go for Rooftop Swarm. Storm, sorry, not Swarm. Um, and yeah, you can also win, um, if your sack outlet doesn't want you to spawn the game, cards like Plague Belcher, Diagraph, Aether Flux, Diagraph Colossus, um... The, yeah, that's how the the basis of the combos. You also can have other ways you can do it. Like, my Chaos can let you do it with, um, have Angle Lich easier, because then you get four mana off everything, so there's other creatures you can do it with as well. There's just all sorts in your combo. But that that's how the combos work. Um, sorry, that took a while, but that's the basis of the combos. I'll just go over all the cards individually. Feel free to skip forward. You've got Havangle Lich, like I said before, solid, lets us cast anything. So it's good on its own, also works as the combo. Rooftop Swarm makes all the zombies cost zero. Grave Crawler generates us tons of value. We can sack it, bring it back. It's really, really, really good on its own anyway. Already one of the best cards in the deck. Also a combo piece. My Chaos lets us all our creatures essentially generate double value when we're sacking them. Um, they, because they have Undying, and all your other creatures get 1-1, one, one, massive bomb. Liliana can mill us, deal damage to our opponents, remove creatures and cast zombies from our graveyard. She's one of the best cards in our deck and is definitely worth the include. Ashnod's Altar, insane sack outlet, can already generate us tons of value on its own, to converting our scrap creatures for mana, and gen most of our creatures, like Stitcher Supply for example, generate us value if they die. Um, Really solid card. Ultra of Dementia, nice sack outlet, can sift for our deck really quickly and get every card we need in our graveyard. Carrion Feeder, nice sack outlet, also a zombie, so we can cast it from our graveyard. Diagraph Colossus can get massive, so it can win the game that way. Can make a bunch of tutus if we're casting zombies. We normally, even on a regular turn, going to be casting two, three, or even four zombies, thanks to Geyser and Giraffe. So this can quickly win us the game by swarm anyway. And it's also a payoff for infinite casts. Diagraph Captain gives all the other zombies 1-1. One, one, so it can, once again, help us swarm over if we need to. And it can also lose some life for our opponents. And it's a payoff for infinite death triggers. Aether Flux Reservoir 
will often get us above 50 life on its own. So many games, I've dropped Geyser and Jarrell, dropped this on the next turn, and then the next turn I've cast three or four spells and just won the, killed an opponent like that or won the game if it's a 1v1. This is really good on its own and we'd already be running it, but with the combo, it's made even better as it's a payoff for infinite casts. Plague Belcher um, can help swarm over, kill our opponent, and is a payoff for infinite deaths. Universal Automaton, it's a 1 mana 1 1 zombie. It's a colorless as well, so this is a nice body to set and it works with the combo. Mem Knight, combo piece, can also sack to um, some of our sack outlets or things that sacrifice for value, which can be nice. And Sparring Construct, works with the combo and is really nice to sack for a bit of value. Now that's the combo section. Um, the rest of the deck, I don't have a zombie section, just all the zombies, I just put them in the section that the abilities really send them into. Hey, now we're on to the card drawer and tutor section. Um, first up in the card drawer and tutor section, we have Stitcher Supplier. Stitcher Supplier, 1 mana 1-1. One, one. When it enters or dies, we mill for free cards. This is broken. This essentially almost draws us 6 cards every time. And once we get Geyser and Draft, we could every turn, we're essentially getting 6 cards if we need to. Great to set, gets us tons of value. One of the strongest cards in our deck. Crypt Breaker can create, create us tutus and discard cards because we sometimes want stuff in our graveyard rather than our hand um, and swarm over with zombies and it can also draw us a bunch of cards if we can make enough zombies which can generate into tons of value. Gataxian Probe, essential in any higher power deck. For a mere two life, it puts a card into our graveyard, it draws us a card and we can look at target opponent's hand which can be game changing. Codex Shredder, this can really add up. By turn 4 or 5, you've milled 4 or 5 cards off this, which is really good rate for 1 mana. And if we have 5 mana and tap it, we can also return any card from our graveyard to our hand. So this can also, ha we have a bit of trouble, like I said before, returning artifacts, enchantments, and instants. So this can really help with that. Skull Clamp can be used as a sack outlet of a creature's one or less toughness to draw us two cards, or a creature we're about to sacrifice anyway, it can just get us two extra cards. Insane card. Village Rites, I love this card. I made an entire video on why this card is broken. Uh, you should definitely, well, you don't definitely, like, it's, to be honest, even though I love this card, it's probably one of the weaker cards of the deck, but it is really good. A sacrificing a creature is with this deck, like I said before, more or less an upside. Like with this, you're going to want to sack it. So um, that's an upside of anything, and it draws us two cards. In turn, gets any card and puts it into our graveyard. So this is essentially one mana draw a card. Well, not no, not draw a card. One mana tutor, really solid. Fort Scour draws us a card and mills us for two. So milling, like I said, it's nearly as good as drawing, so it's pretty close to a draw free. My Triton, a nice zombie. It's a 2 mana 2 1 death touch, so it can be a teeny bit swarmy, good to defend. But the reason why it's good is when it enters, we mill for 2 and gain 2 life. So with Geyser and Drelf, we can play it, mill for 2, sack it, then play it back, mill for another 2, and then every turn we can do this. And it's a zombie, so like because it's a zombie, it generates this value of other things, and is a solid card. Screeching Scab, essentially a weaker version of my Trident. I just really like zombies that mill us when they enter or die. I think they're really solid in the stick and are definitely worth the include. Wailing Ghoul, essentially another Screeching Scab, except it's got one less power and two more toughness. Undeaded Jaw, this is also why I'm running all these zombies that we want to sack and then bring back. Cards like this, this is whenever it or another zombie we control dies, we draw a card and lose one life. Helps us sift for our deck even faster, get to the cards we need really quickly. Mausoleum Secrets is a nice tutor as long as we have some stuff in our graveyard. Pretty solid. Ransack the Lab. Two mana, look at the top three cards of our library, put one into our hand and the rest into our graveyard. We get the card out of the top three we want into our hand and the others into our graveyard. So this is pretty close to a draw free as well. Demonic Tutor. Essential and really any EDH debt. It is pretty pricey, so you can probably swap it out. But two mana to search our library for any card is really strong. Armored Scab. 
Three mana when it enters mills us for four cards, which can generate into tons of value. Uh, good to sack. We can sack and bring it back. This is really nice to play on curve into our commander the next turn. Then we've got eight cards in our graveyard, and we've likely played something on turn two or one. So we'll normally have got for about 10 to 12 cards of our deck by that point, and we'll likely have one or two of our combo pieces already. And also another good thing about the combo in this deck is it's super resilient. Even if they destroy one of the pieces... You can just bring it back because of all our resurrection. Um, yeah, it's just really hard to deal with a combo. Um, the only way to really get rid of it is exile multiple of the pieces because we have like three, four, five, six. We have like 15, 20 different card combinations we can combo off with, if not more. We do like, if they exile like Liliana, Gravecrawler, and like, well, no, Liliana, Havangle, and Rooftop Swarm. I think we've got almost no combos left at that point. In fact, yeah, no combos left at that point. If they can exile all three of those cards, then we have to resort to hopefully swarming them over. But realistically, it's so hard to deal with. Crow of Dark Tidings next. It's essentially just an armored scab, but it's a 2-1 flying. Can help get through for a bit of damage. Help us win by swarm if we need to. Midnight Reaper, essentially an undead draw as well. Draws us tons of cards when our stuff dies. Great value. Heirloom Blade. This card's a bit clunky, but it is really strong. We equip it to our creature and then sack it, because we're going to sack it anyway. So it essentially says, as well as giving a creature a buff so they can get a bit of damage in, but you can equip it for one, and then it reveals the top cards of your library until you get a creature card. And we don't actually have too, too many creatures in this, so this will very often hit one of our combo pieces and help us combo off way quicker. And if it doesn't, it's still tons of value, and most of our creatures help us sift our deck anyway. Forbidden Alchemy looks at the top four and gets one of them into our hand. This is essentially, once again, drawing four. And it also has flashback. So if we mill it, we can then generate value later on, or if we play it, we can also generate value later on. Buried Alive. This card is great it's honestly insane i still can't believe this card is a dollar it is broken free mana search your library for three whole creature cards and then you get to put them in your graveyard that is really strong like this will let you win within well the next turn pretty much because this will just get free of your combo pieces bam go off maybe not next turn because you're likely going to have to invest mana to get them back but an, an, sorry incredible card Diabolic Tutor, 4 mana Tutor, it's pretty solid. On the weaker end of Tutors, you could probably swap this out for Grim Tutor, actually. I just have my one Grim Tutor and my Yorgmoth deck right now, but it's solid Tutor. Final Parting, 5 mana gets 1 card into our hand and 1 into our graveyard, so it's essentially search for 2. So normally you'll just go for like a Rooftop Swarm and a Grave Crawler. You'll likely already, the amount you would have milled by then, you'll likely already have a Sack Outlet, and then you can win from there. And then finally in this section, we have Treasure Cruise. We're so off, it's so easy to get seven junk cards in our graveyard, exile them. This is a one mana draw free. Really solid. Dig Through Time can also potentially be viable. I have tried running Dig Through Time instead of this, but the double blue is really annoying to cast it. Dig Through Time is probably actually more powerful when we can cast it, but just paying double blue, it normally shuts us down for the rest of the turn. So I prefer Treasure Cruise, but you could probably also run Dig Through Time. And that's that section out of the way. Now we're on to Utility and Ramp. First up, we have Dark Ritual. Gets us into a turn two commander play, which is really nice. Can also generate us mana to combo off earlier if we need to. Soul Ring, turn two commander, essential in EDH. Talisman, turn three commander drop, nice ramp. Demir Signet, nice, ramps us into a commander. Nightscape Familiar, once again, turn three commander. Playing a commander early is so important, um, really solid. And, uh, yeah, ramps us into other things. And this is all of our blue spells cost one less. So this can often save us two or three mana in a turn. Plus it's a zombie, so we can cast it from our graveyard. And we can regenerate it, so it's very hard to deal with. Deranged Assistant, one of my personal favorite cards in this deck. It is only a human, but it, once again, ramps us into a commander earlier. It only taps for colorless, but it ramps us really quickly. Extra ramp for two mana is always decent. 
and whenever we tap it, we mill ourselves for one. So this can really stack up to three, four, five, six, or even seven or eight cards throughout the course of the game. Victimize, insane graveyard resurrection. For three mana, you have choose two target creature cards in your graveyard, sacrifice a creature if you do return them to the battlefield tapped. If anything, like I've said before, sac sacrifice a creature is an upside, seeing that you've seen most of our creatures. Um, and then resurrecting two creatures from our graveyard. It's not like it's hard to do that anyway, but that can often be such a mana save. Like, that can save us six or seven mana, and we often might have already expended Geese and Giraffe's ability for the turn, so it can speed us up a turn or two. Glass Pool Mimic. Solid, can copy any of our creatures, which is really nice, and can also be played as a tap to blue land. This is a really good card, and in my opinion, this is one of the strongest flip cards from Battle for, not, not Battle for Zendikar, sorry, Zendikar Rising they've printed, and I reckon it's going to become an EDH staple. On both sides, it's really viable in any deck whatsoever. I reckon this is going to be real solid. Well, it already is real solid. I reckon this is going to see playing like every deck. Prized Amalgam, this is a creature, it is so strong. Um, it says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, return it, Prized Amalgam, to the battlefield at your next end step. So whenever we resurrect something, this resurrects too at the end of our turn. So whenever we're playing something back and sacking up the value, we then get to sack two things. It's like just so good. It's such a strong swarm card as well. Well, not such strong, but it's also nice to help swarm over. It just never dies. Really solid card. Dread Return. Can resurrect any creature from our graveyard to play, which can often save us a bit of mana. But the really good thing about this is the flashback. So if we mill it, we can still generate value off it. And it doesn't cost anything to flashback. All we have to do is sacrifice free creatures, which, like I said before, can be an upside. Really good card. Black Market. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard, so any graveyard from play, you put a charge counter on it. And then at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you get a black for each charge counter on it. This card is so strong. Even just after one table loop of this, it'll sometimes be giving you three, four, or even five mana. Incredible card and essentially gives us all the mana we need to combo off the next turn or turn after that. Noxious Goal. It says when it or another zombie comes into play, all non-zombies get minus one, minus one until end of turn. This card's so solid. Um, we are often, with our commander, res sac re resurrecting and lots of cheap creatures. This will often just board wipe turn after turn. Exceptionally strong card. Grey Merchants of Asphodel. Now, this is more of an alternate one con on, on its own. So you play it, hit them for, I don't know, six or eight, no, I'll say eight. Eight life. Then you sack it, play it back with Geyser and Drow, hit them again. Sack it, um, next turn, sack it, play it back. It, plus it gains you like 20 life because it's all the life lost you gain. Um, and this will just kill them within two or three turns. Really nice card. Command the Dread Horde. Um, this can resurrect any cards from any graveyard we want. And it does deal a bit of damage, so it's not infinite. But most of the time, this is just resurrect anything and everything because if you're playing higher power dealing 20 damage to you still doesn't really matter it's more or less combo that wins and if your enemies are trying to kill you with damage i highly doubt they're going to when you're going to combo that much faster and then finally in this section we have zombie apocalypse now where would the flavor be if we weren't running zombie apocalypse resurrects all zombie cards from our graveyard to the battlefield this is more powerful in a swarm deck but it is still viable and then it destroys all humans. So all humans can often get a, quite a bit of value off opponents. It does kill a commander. But the fact this resurrects all zombies is really good. This is often like a 5 for 1. Really solid card. Now that completes that section. Now we're on to the final section. Um, Not final section. Well, it's a final card section. Not card. Non-land section. Sorry. Um, We're on to utility no, sorry, not utility. Jeez, I'm making so many mistakes. Protection and interaction. So first up, we've got Tragic Slip. For one mana, target creature gets minus three, minus, minus one, minus one, sorry, until end of turn. But if we have Morbid, it essentially just destroys any creature, minus 13, minus 13, which is broken. Sinister Concussion. One mana enchantment. We can then pay one, 
pay one life, and then we get to mill ourselves for one, discard a card, sacrifice the concoction to destroy target creature. So essentially what this is, is two mana, discard a card and mill yourself for one to destroy target creature. This is pretty nice because it puts, it, and sack itself, because it puts two cards into our graveyard it, and milling ourselves for one, which is de a big upside. You may not think it is, but that's essentially drawing a card. Um, it destroys a creature for two mana, which is a good rate. And the discard a card isn't actually that bad. And this deck will often have something we'd rather have in our graveyard in our hand. And this can generate us some nice extra value. So this is a really strong card in the deck. Malakia Rebirth. Can, it's one mana instant. We choose a creature. We do have to pay two life. That doesn't really matter. But until end of turn, that creature has, when it dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Now what we often do with this as we will even target our own creature, we're going to sack for value. We sack it, get the value, then it enters again, we get the value, then we sack it again, and then you get the and then you can play it back. And then sack it again. This is essentially just an extra sack we get on one of our creatures, which is really good. And if our opponent this is the main reason. And if our, an opponent's trying to destroy one of our creatures, it's automatic protection. So it also get, generates this value of the destroying like oh, there is one. Oh, sorry about that. Um, if they're trying to destroy like a Crow of Dark Tidings or an Armored Scab or any of those type of cards. Really nice. Compelling Deterrence. Returns target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Then that, that player discards a card if you control a zombie. This is really nice. Returning target non-land permanent in CDH is pretty close to removal. Plus making them discard a card is so nice. Really nice. Force of Despair, really good in comp more competitive games and regular games. <clears throat> Com essentially completely shuts down an opponent for a turn. Really strong card. We do have to, if we want to cast it for free, we do have to exile a black card from our hand. But otherwise, it's just board wipes all the stuff they've played this turn. Really nice. Stronghold Assassin, taps and sacrifices a creature to destroy any non-black creature. This is essential. A sack outlet is always nice, so that of anything that's an upside, and every turn we just sack a creature, destroy an enemy's thing. Really nice value. Next up, we have Liliana of the Veil. She is a bit pricey, so you might want to put another card in instead of her, but for free mana, she's free loyalty. Tick her up to make each player discard a card. This can quickly drain out all your opponent's hands, and doesn't really punish you, as you don't really so much mind discarding. Minus two for target player to sacrifice a creature. Where if you drop her on turn three, this is often spot removal. And in competitive, that is pretty much spot removal. They're unlikely to have many, much many things they want to sack. And then her minus six essentially ball wipes an opponent, which is really nice. Not quite a complete ball wipe, but of all their board, but like you normally just say all your lands or your creatures, that sort of thing. Really, really strong. Barter and Blood, each player sacrifices two creatures. In competitive EDH, this might as well be a destroy all creatures, or pretty close to it. And then um, a sack two creatures is not even that bad for us. Like once again, if anything, it's an upside because we're going to want to sack them creatures and then bring them back. So if anything, this is a one-sided heavy ball wipe to your opponents and it's sacrifice so things with heck well not hexproof dies to ball wipes anyway things with indestructible do still suffer from it grave pact really nice whenever one of our creatures die each other player sacrifices a creature busted card really good in this deck because every turn we're going to go sack play back so this will quickly destroy our opponent's boards dictate of erebos essentially the same thing as flash so a bit more utility and then finally, we have Ruthless Disposal. This is one of my favourite cards. It's a 5 minus sorcery, and it says and as, as an additional cost to cast it, discard a card and sacrifice a creature. This isn't too bad. We don't mind discarding, and we definitely don't mind sacrificing. So that's barely a downside of anything. But it says two target creatures each get minus 13, minus 13 until end of turn. So this will essentially destroy the what well, will... I keep saying essentially, this will destroy the two strongest creatures on your opponent's boards, completely shutting them down, slowing them down. It hits not anything, 
it hits 99.99% of cards in EDH. There's like four creatures in the game that can survive without hexproof that can survive a ruthless disposal. Except, sorry, extremely strong card. Definitely worth the include, especially in this deck where the downside is more or less an upside. Now, finally, I'll just quickly go over what I'm using as my mana base. Evolving Wild slash Terramorphic Expanse. I'm only running, running one of them. It helps thin out our deck. Um, it, it searches for color fixing. It does it into tapped, which isn't that big, big of an upside. It's downside. But it also puts a card into our graveyard, which is pretty nice. Unclaimed Territory. Taps for any color for zombies. Demir Guildgate. Enters tap, but can tap for blue or black. Nice color fixing. Underground River. Nice color fixing. Submerged Bo Boneyard. Color fixing. Drunk Catacomb, nice colour fixing. River of Tears, very strong colour fixing. Clearwater Pathway, very strong colour fixing. And Choked Estuary, very, very strong colour fixing. Demir Aqueduct, make sure we have a land to play. Essentially, kind of draws us a card. And yeah, nice card. Haunted Fengraph, only taps for colourless, but then later on we can use it to resurrect a creature from our graveyard to our hand. And when we sack it, it also puts a card into our graveyard. Really nice card in this deck. High Market. Only taps for a colorless, but can be used as a sack outlet. Tap it, sack a creature, and you get a gain of life as well. So this can be nice if we want to, let's say, sack one of our mill zombies and then bring it back for the value. Solid card. And Westvale Abbey. Westvale Abbey, incredible card. Should really go into any EDH deck that can run black. Um, we can pay, it taps for colorless, we can then pay five and tap it to create a 1-1, one, one, and we do have to pay one life, but that doesn't really matter, to create a 1-1, one, one, which can get us a bit of value, but the really good thing about this is five and tap, sack five creatures, that is hard to get, but often that's not going to be too big of a downside, and it transforms into Ormendal, which is a game-winning bomb that can kill an opponent in three or four turns, really nice card, definitely worth the include. And then the rest of the mana base, just put in any fixing, things like fetch lands and shock lands. I'm not running them. You should probably put in. But then the rest, I'm just all running pro appropriate basic lands. And yeah, guys, that concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed. Now, I'm going to be making another version of this deck, a, a not so much competitive version that doesn't revolve around the graveyard so much, but a swarm version that just goes like, just swarms over, plus with the include of Geese and Giralf, it makes all your creatures resilient and it gives you card advantage, which is pretty hard in a swarm deck. So I'm going to be doing a video on that. It should be up sometime soon as well. But for now, thanks for watching. I'm also going to be hopefully do a gameplay video of this one day as well, but because it is one of my favorite decks. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more from me, make sure to smash down on that subscribe and like button. And I hope to see you next time.